Listener discretion is advised. You have stumbled upon a meandering, horny, tabletop series filled with violent and irreverent humor. This podcast is meant for open-minded adults who enjoy dark humor and can handle violence and explicit gory scenes. This tabletop campaign touches on several sensitive subjects and explores all sides of the human and social condition, even the unsavory ones. Drug references, coarse language, gore, fear, and sexual situations, just to name a few. All opinions made during the podcast do not reflect anyone's true beliefs, but are made for humor and commentary. And finally, this podcast is reluctantly brought to you by ADD. But yeah, so he's walking backwards talking to you guys. So I'm assuming you all know about Calvin Iron, the whole lore story behind him. Well, just in case, uh, just in case you're this dude right here, he does know who he is. So ultimately, the Knights of Iron is the Knights of Pedestry, you know that much. The, I guess, independent Knights. After that, uh, I guess the rebellion 30 years ago, Calvin turned traitor on the, on the Royal Guards. Calvin Iron, known at the time as the Bastard Knight of the Royal Guard, turned traitor. When the peasantry showed up at the castle itself to rebel, he saw the current captain of the Royal Guard order the archers to open fire on the peasantry. So ultimately, after an argument, he won't be heading the captain of the Royal Guard. When he told the archers to stand down, they kept firing until he killed all of them. Well, except for two, but we'll talk about the two later, he says. The point is, even though, even though the peasantry spared him because he loved them in, he's still a wanted criminal by the crown. But ultimately, because we are the Bastard Knights, and that would be his name too, we took on the mantle of the Iron Knights. So, you'll still have all the privileges of being a knight, you know, the elevation above the peasantry, the ability to bring justice to the nobility, obviously. We are the watchdogs of the peasantry. We are the ones who make sure the nobility stay in line this time. Well, unless, you know, the behaving start again. I mean, I heard some of Dorvis William really worked out a rolling guillotine. So that's really going to make transplant that thing efficient. <laughs> Back to your original question. We're here because you're going to be knighted. And you never see a knighting uh, ceremony, only the crown can knight. As you know, the, the former king, Grayson, was executed by the peasantry. His queen is still alive. Here. So you guys are about to meet the bounded queen. Or the executed queen, however people want to call it. They call it executed queen because most people think she's dead. Right. It's probably safer for her that way. Well, she's currently in the place full of the criminal insane and the magically wicked. Mm-hmm. I'll be safe is literally the word. Magically wicked. <laughs> yeah. The wizards who have done right and done evil. You can't really put them in general in prison. They have magic. But, you know, we're not just going to kill them off. They have the right to serve their time and release back to populace. So we're not going to cut their hands off. That'd be horrifying. We just Maybe. break them for a while. <laughs> Monsters. But, you know... <laughs> One of the things they try and, you know, blows with, pulls hand in a quarter oh. way. Oh, don't break the law. Right. Sentence is three months, the exact time it takes to heal. <laughs> Your sentence is until you feel better. <laughs> I hope you remember what you did. Because, uh, I kind of forgot, honestly. <laughs> Another three inches. <laughs> oh. So she starts going back up at that point. <laughs> Very good. Crime went down. <laughs> way down. Oh, shit. Sure. I introduced myself. Leon. Leon Stratus. Yes, yes, uh, the Stratus family. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Practically a bastard. You know, only second in line. Practically, practically a bastard. bastard. My older brother pushed on the stairs every time we passed. Last stairs in my household, practically old stairs. <laughs> that weird dimensional thing, you know? <laughs> uh, right? I fell <laughs> left board for three days. <laughs> There's no real way to prepare you for the next room. He says, stop before herself. She has gone mad. It's because you're looking at the girl for me oblongs. <laughs> well, yeah, the Queen Kassara, apparently she's been mad for years, and the King just kept that on her wraps. So, she is quite the sight right now. Now, she is a druid, so she is magical. So, we had to take extra precautions with her. You know, she might be a bear right now. Hey, you guys ready to be knighted by a bear? So, just give you guys the double guts. Sounds, sounds fun. Sounds fun. Hey, a queen bear on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrifying. All right, well, well, bleed in, bleed out, right? He opens the doors. All right, upon me opening the doors, you guys smell blood, just iron and rust. In the room, there is a table set in the middle of the room. The table is clean and polished. It seemed like it was brought in there the day. Uh, there's lovely drapings, you know, open windows, some flowers growing in the pots. But in the middle of the room, there's just scratches on the floor. You know, breaks in the tiles. Blood smashing some of the walls and floor. And, you know, 
arms crossed in a str arms crossed in a straight jacket, leaning against the wall, chained up animal lecture style, is a you know, beautiful tall elven female, probably about seven foot tall, long, glorious green hair, flowers growing from the ends of them. I gotta admit, I kinda wanted to see the bear in the straight jacket. <laughs> <laughs> well disappointed, huh? Maybe uh, I should have been short try to see him real fast. Anyway, so she's not wearing the face mask, but she is like chained uh, chain to the wall type deal. She's still wearing a metal crown. But hanging the metal crown is a metal jagged uh, tear shaped uh, shard of metal covering over her left eye. There appears to be blood coming out behind it. She has a uh, like a leather gag in her mouth. And she's beaming straight death, you guys. Her eye is very predatorial, like bird like, like a watching hawk or an uh, eagle. Not element whatsoever. Just has that bird sharpness to it. <sighs> Quite the sight, isn't it? We're gonna let her have a sword here in a second. See what? <laughs> she has to bite us. <laughs> Alright, anyway, he kneels before her. I kneel too. Yeah. Alright, anyway, Lady Kassara Greenville, I bring the knights in your request. May they serve you and your purpose for, uh, forever. Stands up, gives up from his kneel, gives a bow, backs out of the room, and she speaks to you guys. So, you're this year's stable. Have the Iron Knights lost that many members so far? They are according to the agreement, there's only supposed to be 30 knights at any given time. So, it looks like she literally looks for all the room. Five of you died this year, at least. She lets out a merry laugh. She kind of enjoys the idea of your guys of you guys dying. It does me well to see you guys dying out, but I have a duty of hopeful because I must, and because my my husband, the idiot he is, had to die. I will knight you. So whichever one of you is the bravest, come forth. This character's growing up. He's got a lot less to lose than them, and has probably faced fear more often, starved yeah. or something like that. That's, well, you guys got like silk beds to lose and shit. Exactly. <laughs> they have a mayonnaise sandwich waiting for my home right now. It's like, where well, I've been to that country. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, as you push forward, you feel kind of the heat coming off her. Just that magical pressure for you. Someone walks in the room. Uh, guys, you know, yeah, Chris like looks six foot metal hand dogs. <laughs> <laughs> right, guy walks in the room. Yo, know, he basically unbolts her from the wall. As he bolts from the wall, kind of a slow radiance of golden energy falls from the chains. As you feel her magic kind of push out of the room, kind of brushing your hair slightly, pushing your eyes inwards a little bit. The guy then produces a sword. Now she's straight jacketed. He removes the gag from her mouth and puts the, the handle in her mouth. Runs in and approaches you guys. Talking pretty, pretty clearly with a gag in her mouth. Yes, she was. So, was she actually talking, or was it mentally projected, or are you See, just now really you're thinking know? about it, yeah. oh my god, she was mentally projected this whole time. Totally. <laughs> well, the royal family in Greenville for generations had bred the best wizards, the best magic wizards. It's, it's crazy to think about it, but you are witnessing a fraction of the crown's magical power. Or at least the former crown's magical power. Right. Right now, one of the lamer cousins of Kirkin right now. The, the people the pastry side is okay enough to rule over them. Got enough yokel in that blood. <laughs> exactly. Or he seemed to be the best choice amongst all the people he could pick. But she steps forward, she turns head sideways and stabs the sword at the table. She stands upwards, you know, once again, she's about seven foot tall. Alright, she's kind of working her jaw right now, like she's like stretching out it, because you're she had a gag for a while. She's like, ah, oh, God, like just stretching it. Alright, and she asks you to recite the oath. I will recite it. All right. Alright, so you recite the, uh, the oath verbatim, because, you know, it, it enter into a pact with, you know, the bounded queen. Now, Shit, her, seems like it got more real. <laughs> <laughs> Siren, baby. Anyway, her actual voice she's using now when she touches the oath, not some mental projection. Her actual voice sounds rough and raspy. It sounds like, very much, you know, like she's been screaming for hours, and both cords are still trying to heal. You know, so she pulls the sword back out of the table with her teeth. You know, Almost in a comical way of thinking about it, she, you know, just knights you with the sword on both shoulders, and then you move, right, put the sword back on the table. Guess I'll get next. Ah, <laughs> uh, is the one of the bootlickers. Does your family play nice and grab with the peasantry? Yes. That's adorable. And I see that you decide not to have any honor and you join the bastard knights. That's even more cute. I'll take great honor and comedy in knighting a pathetic family like yours. Now, Neil. I do. Lower. All right. Head on floor. Ooh, it's a dirty floor. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't I was standing there. <laughs> well, it is a dirty floor. Remember, it's covered like an 80 blood and rescue thing. He's like the Charlie Brown character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pinkpin. Uh. 
That's just horrible. Jesus Christ, man. Wait, I think we would have kicked you out. Hobo Prince. <laughs> I'm stealing my stick now. <laughs> so. We would have put you on top of the carriage if that was... <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> or just hung out the window, really winked you out a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but I kept funneling back in the back window. <laughs> oh, that's why that girl was in the corner. <laughs> exactly why she was in the corner. Yeah, twice. She knew if she moved too timidly, I might eat her. <laughs> I mean, you are trying to figure out a way to boil shoes in the back of a carriage. Oh, that's to figure out how. <laughs> That's the worst like, part. <laughs> no, right? It was more like pickling. It just like salt and water in a boot in a jar. Uh, I live on a bunch of log cows, so I know how to regurgitate, soak the leather in the bile, and then sun dry it and eat it like chips. Mm -hmm. You've never been hungry. No. <laughs> That's <not> correct. Correct. <laughs> I mean, she asked you to uh, recite the iron oath without laughing. Mm -hmm. I do. Oh, look. It's capable of thought. And she knights you, sticks the sword back on the table. Well... Next, I'll solo purchase. She just stares at him and knights him. Like, what? I don't get any spill or spoken down to? She just stares at him. She just backs away from her. <laughs> he feels like How does that feel worse? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she did it. Not even worth commenting. Hmm? And she talked to me, and I'm nothing. And, uh, so they get the girl into the room now. <laughs> She's both hands on the door trying to keep herself from getting dirty. <laughs> AJ, you approaching? Yeah, I'll approach. Wow. I'm excited. Uh, I thought you were talking to the queen. Bow. Oh, <laughs> oh, my damn. You're Bow and bitch. Bitch. Oh. Nice to me. Ow. Holy shit. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> he has character. He's just jacked up. <laughs> you pink fuckers don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they do not. It's up to me. <laughs> yeah, you some more better insults than the one before that. Surely if I knew that you actually had the bravery to approach me, I would have saved something for you. The family with the all-seeing eyes. Somehow last to the w battlefield during the revolt. Heck, yeah, we saw what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's waiting for all this, is your family. See how you say so. Hmm. Well, make sure you use your power a lot. I look forward to watching you unalive yourself. And you will. I'm seeing your eyes right now. You're about you're about one orchid encounter from dying. An oh, orchid encounter? I wasn't sure what she said. <laughs> I'm glad this won't you. Hmm. Well, she looks ever down. It's good for your servant put starch in your clothing. I wouldn't think you had a spine to stand up right now if you didn't. Now go ahead and put some wrinkles in those cute little silk drawers of yours and kneel. So kneel. Lower. I'll go to a point. What's a point? I won't touch the floor. I think it's basically a half ass curtsy. <laughs> oh, yes, Steven. Rebellion! Alright, so check. Come on! I'll rephrase that charisma check. Don't make me a bitch! God damn it! Well, as you do it, she gets some rage. She kicks the table over, crushing you. She stabs the sword. Uh, she grabs the sword out of the air, stabs the uh, the table right side of your head. You're knighted. <laughs> you had to show them. You no. Know. <laughs> Warren pulls her off. <laughs> she likes me. <laughs> you helping them? Yeah. All right. They put the little cover. Oh, over the table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After a moment, of course, but you know, <laughs> surprise. See, yeah. You so say you're knighted. Yay. Uh, anyway, Leon. Billy Elves are the room. He didn't say the oaf. <laughs> that was the first thing I said. No, she, she didn't tell you to say that. Because you, 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 you wouldn't bow. <laughs> I bow. I just didn't go to the floor. Yeah, that's, that's not valid. That's why she crushed you at the table. She's still a queen, damn it. Good, I got a loophole behind me. <laughs> I'm sure she don't make you say that out before we take I dropped the table with you and say that out. Well, he's pointing it out, so. Like, oh, we're going to take it. He's like, oh, yeah. No, no, no. I just roll back on you. Ah! <laughs> Say those, and I move the table. Matter. We can't interfere you can't, with the ritual. You, you can't see it. Or you can't see it from there on the table. The table's still on top of you. Say it. Go ahead. Say the words of the traitor. I push the table off, so I'm not on the ground. How big is the table? It, you push it off. Uh, I push it off and get off the floor, and I'll say, hmm? "Stay where she put me." And well, she's leaning forward towards you. The warden's holding back on her, like you know, <laughs> kind of holding back her chain, like leaning in you, smooth criminal style. The hair's like slowly reaching <laughs> toward you. Staring at this down closer into the Do light. Do we have to buzz cut you? Warren says. <laughs> the hair just settles back down. <laughs> she remembers. <laughs> and I'll say, we'll see. Hmm? For fuck's sake, man, it's not working out here. Hey, <laughs> say the oath. Hey, that count can talk out, man. Anyway, so the girl gets thrown in the room. And she was actually fodder the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and she, of course, the queen eats her. She takes no joy in it because she wants to hunt. <laughs> but she, she doesn't want. Me. She doesn't want to be fed. She wants to hunt. 
more reason to get the hell out of here. <laughs> 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 you float in the room, Trigger rises to one knee, you start reciting the oath, like just machine gun firing out. It's like one line of nerves, boom, 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 boom. Plains <laughs> into the support. <laughs> <laughs> Why she say oh fast as humanly possible while still not stuttering? The queen pulls the warden forward. Because before she reaches for the sword, yeah. So the girl reaches the sword before the queen can get get towards it, and kind of just like tosses it to the side out of the way, just in case. She seems very deliberate about that. At the time, you know, uh, a blood fires from the warden's hand as the chain rips from his hands. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to hold her back that much. She stomps down the table, cracking it, coming, you know, as she gets up to right in front of the girl. She kneels down before her and puts her forehead against her forehead. The warden doesn't know the make of this either. Leah just slowly produces an apple. I know I should. I'm really hungry. <laughs> Starts just eating this apple. <laughs> All right. So their forehead against each other for a couple seconds. The girl eventually hugs her. The queen is Kate. She met try mind transfer. <laughs> <laughs> Noise. I said to take a shit. <laughs> Alright. The girl backs away. The queen returns to watch past the warden. As she presses by him, his hands start healing. It's like light energy coming out of his hands. Thanks, the warden says to her. And the warden points at the girl. Who the fuck let her here? The you queen guys. turns back towards her again. All the respect. No, the warden has nothing to do with this. This is the warden of the prison. Oh. I was just leaving. So who is she? I'll ask, oh, yeah, I'll ask out of them. All right, she, all right, she goes to leave the room, comes to stop her and Leon, who's still eating the apple. Please. Leon gets out of the way. All right, walk with the table. Is <laughs> that after her? All right, guys, let's go for our carriage ride. Do you get a better carriage now? Oh, look, that carriage not good enough? I'm just ordering it. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not the peasantry, and uh, our funding is kind of tight right now. Just to keep breaking tables. <laughs> well, this is the prison, that's not blue bus. Anyway, he bows again to the queen. I bow again, even though. <laughs> yeah, but, Well, you're still under the royalty, didn't you, sir? Yeah, but you're yeah. You're still part of the king. Well, she's no longer the queen, technically. It's just on that. She is, but so still. That's why I'm bowing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bowing to the power. Exactly. <laughs> unless her, unless she shows my dream in zebra form and kicks his head off. Yeah. I'm pretty nice. <laughs> so tired. So it's still time. Uh, not the ones I want. <laughs> but it's the ones I got. The doctor says it's good heart health, but... <laughs> no, I am a growing boy. I mean, what's the guy you got, two years old, you said? Uh, her age. Two years, seven foot four. <laughs> All, right. All right, so that was the nighting ceremony. Thank you for joining us on this episode. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment below. If we are feeling especially masochistic, we will read them. Criticism is always welcome. Ignored, but welcome. We will have a new episode coming your way shortly, and as always, we'd like to thank our sponsors. ADD. You will inevitably find happiness with ADD once you get around to it.